So recently, my friend Mr. Docs had shared on his website, MrDocs.com, a new blog post and write-up titled File Fix, a Click Fix Alternative. If you aren't familiar with Click Fix, it's basically an attack vector that just tells the user to run malware or malicious payload on their computer by giving them step-by-step -step instructions. Usually it tells the victim to press the Windows button on their keyboard, hold it down and press the R key on their keyboard to open up the Windows Run dialog box. And the attack will have already automatically copied some data into your clipboard, so it tells you to press Control V, the hotkey to paste. Then, simply pressing Enter, the victim has infected themselves. Now obviously this relies on the victim falling for the trick, but this has been running rampant for the past year, and as it turns out, it's effective. People will fall for it. Hackers, threat actors, and adversaries will take advantage of things like this, so it's worthwhile for us to know how they work and what they look like. So Mr. Docs in his blog post was talking about another way the click fix attack could be carried out. He mentions how simple and silly this technique is, but also includes the news articles and headlines that show the cybersecurity industry has been seeing this everywhere. The thing is, the first step of this click fix attack is to use the Windows Run dialog box, that Windows key and R hotkey on your keyboard. So he wanted something else. And this is kind of clever, because he remembers that whenever you upload a file to a website, whenever you're using your web browser to surf the internet, if you were to use this input type HTML element and ask for a file, it will pop open the File Explorer. Like as if you were navigating in the folders and files on your computer, just using regular Windows Explorer. The trick here being, if you were to navigate to the address bar at the very top of the program window, rather than typing in a location or file path on your computer, you could run a command. You can just run a program on your computer if you type in the full path. But built-in binaries, like things in the regular system path, could open and run just fine if I press enter. Here as an example, I've opened up Notepad, but that could just as easily have been any malicious payload. All to stage and run malware. Thing is, whenever you choose a file to upload to a website, you can do the exact same thing. The behavior is the same, and you can run any command. Now, doing this within the web browser will obviously spawn that child process underneath chrome.exe, firefox.exe, edge, or whatever browser. Granted, that's the case if you were to use this HTML element with the input type equals file and click to upload, but you could just as easily tell the user to press the Windows key and E on their keyboard as the hotkey to open up Explorer. While that trick works, then it's a matter of making the lure. It is social engineering, so we need pretext or a pretense to have the user fall for this and paste our command. So say we got a little bit clever and started to think, well, the file explorer is associated with working with files. So maybe a phishing page will claim that a file has been shared with the user and it gives them these instructions. Before we go any further though, please let me take just a moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Altered Security. The best way to learn cybersecurity is through hands-on and practical exercises and having a challenge, something to prove your competency and merit so the industry knows you're a professional. With over 15 years of experience in teaching red team classes, Altered Security brings you affordable, easy to access labs and courses from industry experts. Get certified in on-premise red teaming with their well-known training for CRTP, the certified red team professional. Level up to become an expert and a master with CRTE and CRTM. Focusing on evading EDRs and other defenses? Learn it in their Evasion Lab, CETP. Want to upgrade to one of the most coveted skills in cybersecurity? Start learning Azure Red Teaming with CARTP and take it to the next level with focus on OPSEC and evasion with CARTE. On top of that, a number of these trainings are also available as live online training boot camps. Altered Security offers some of the most recognizable certifications and top tier training in the industry. They're running a month-long promotion in July 2025 called Hacker Summer. Use the code HACKERSUMMER20OFF to get 20% off on all purchases. You can get started learning and sharpening your security skills with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash altered security. Huge thanks to Altered Security for sponsoring this video. 
So say that the victim user was presented with these simple steps. They had to simply copy a file path and then open the file explorer with the button they click on and then select the address bar. There's a convenient hotkey, control L, that'll automatically jump your cursor there. Then they could paste in the pre-populated payload with control V as another hotkey and press enter. Now you could hide the command that you wanna run alongside a comment and then tucking in the actual file path or whatever you use to mask and tuck away the actual payload. Mr. Docs shared an example here for us with a lot of HTML that we could copy and paste and see this in action. This puts all the capability into one single HTML file. We can open up a text editor, I'll use Sublime Text, and if I paste this in, you'll see it includes all the JavaScript as well as the CSS or cascading style sheets, so it's one individual file. Now just to experiment with this inside of our own local virtual machine, we can open up the web page that we would naturally see out on the internet. Mr. Docs made an HR policy document available to you. It says to access this file, we can follow these steps below, with the first step being copy the file path. We can click into this and it'll automatically copy for us. Open the file explorer with the button below and select the address bar with control L being a hot key to jump there. Then we paste the file path and press enter. So easy enough, say we were to fall for this lure, I've clicked to open the file explorer, I hit control L on my keyboard to jump to the address bar. I hit control V to paste, and you might not be able to see it because there are a lot of spaces added at the very end here, but take a look, we could scroll through this and see the original file path it intended for us to include. But at the very beginning, there are a couple more spaces that hide and tuck away a PowerShell.exe command. So if I didn't notice this, and if I simply pressed enter, it will start that ping process, or run whatever payload we want. One thing to note is that this isn't going to close the file explorer or close the web page that you're on. There's no real way to connect that logic on the endpoint versus what you're seeing on the website because you've detached those to run a command locally on your home computer. But if the payload fires, if they run that malware, well, the damage is already done. Now that we've seen that example in action, Mr. Docs also goes on to expand on it, how you might be able to block actually uploading a file. So if the user were to really choose something, thinking that they were, oh, following through with the usual operations, interacting with it, then it'll block it out. Another neat trick is that the mark of the web attribute is actually removed from executable files or .exe files that are executed through the file explorer's address bar. I haven't played with that any further. I'm curious if, hey, something even on like an SMB share or a web dev share could be something that just will no longer have the MOTW or mark of the web attribute. So you wouldn't have to unblock a file and have smart screen or other security mechanisms get in the way. Mr. Docs considered, well, you could actually have a real download happen as they click the open file explorer button, maybe some HTML smuggling or drive-by downloads, however clever you want that to be. But there might be some other hiccups with smart screen or Google safe browsing or other things that'll get in the way. So your mileage may vary. Now, when Mr. Docs first shared this on Twitter or X, you've got folks, red teamers, penetration testers, or cyber threat emulation folks looking at how they could actually do more with it. Or what are the other effects? Someone catching, oh, there's actually a Defender 365 detector for having a Microsoft logo included in a page. My buddy Ryan Chapman looking for some of the blue team or Defender tricks to be able to detect this. Again, maybe you look for that payload or command prompt, PowerShell or executable running as a child process to Chrome or other web browsers. But again, that's if you use the index type HTML element. One interesting note is that doesn't run in a like sandbox process. You still get medium integrity running. And other tricks might just be using protocol handlers like the search-ms URI schema. Think search-ms colon slash slash. Looks like someone even tried that SMB or WebDAV remote payload option that I was kind of rumbling about and someone caught Defender is already on this. Inside of this virtual machine that I'm using for testing, I don't have Defender enabled, but if your antivirus does flag on this, it'll raise with the HTML slash file fix alert. And my friend John May is getting clever. A lot of interesting ideas that could come from this if you were to download a fake .cr download file, but then tell them to actually open their downloads for their web browser. You can see them suggesting to press Control J on your keyboard for a canceled or failed download, and then potentially run something else. So you might get creative and start thinking of other different sort of pretense or lures that could be used for this sort of technique. What will hackers think up that are file associated activities when using your web browser? 
Of course, stuff like uploading and downloading files on disk, but there are plenty of other options. Folks might be super desensitized to those pop-ups or banners that say, this website uses cookies. Well, cookies are those small data blobs or cache files from your web browser, and folks might just click through these. But if you're presented after you accept cookies, sorry, there was a problem. Of course, a lie and some trickery here, but say your web browser could not determine the proper storage location for the website's cookies. To continue, say you have to manually enter the proper cookie storage information. And there are three simple steps that a user not knowing, moving quick, might just be trying to make these pop-ups go away. They follow the steps, control L, control V, press enter, and there's a payload. Say it fired some malware, but of course just a small calculator in this example. And say the file path that was copied here in the address bar is some random gobbledygook that will take up a lot of space, but still look like, oh, a potential cookies path for your web browser. Let's try and set up a full demo. I'll hop over to my Kali Linux virtual machine where I have just a reverse shell setup available. I'll use hoax shell so it's pretty simple and I'll have it call back to my attacker IP address so I can gain control of the computer if it were to enter and paste a proper payload. And don't forget, this file fix route or method is just taking advantage of the fact that the Windows Explorer address bar will let you run commands. That file picker window doesn't have to be open just from uploading a file or that input type file HTML element. If you were to save a file in your web browser with the control S hotkey, it opens the explorer same way. You could try to hit control O to open a file in your web browser and it does the very same. And of course the windows key and E is gonna let you do the same thing as windows key and R. You just have to now click control L to get to the address bar. So here's another alternative that uses control S to really look like it is saving cookies, but it's of course pre-populated the clipboard and we just need to paste in a payload. Let me put these side by side. So we have the victim on the left hand side and the attacker on the right. And if they were to fall for this, control S, control O, windows key and E, whatever the case may be, control L to get to the address bar, control V to paste in the payload and enter to get our callback. Again, this isn't pretty because all of these windows will still be open, but if the payload fires and they've already got access or been able to do whatever they want to do, well, they fell for the bait. So that is the file fix little technique. It is simply taking advantage of the Windows Explorer address bar. It is ultimately doing the same thing as the Windows key and R run dialog box, but putting the payload and pasting it in a different place that might look less suspicious. Hackers and threat actors and adversaries may be using that technique, and I think it's worth knowing how it could all come to life and all the other ways it could be done. Big shout out to Mr. Docs. I think that education and awareness is the best that we can do to stay vigilant against stuff that could very well trick us, especially against trusted patterns that we might just be desensitized to, as is the kind of conundrum with the original click fix and now file fix.